Of all the parts of our life we want to work well, perhaps the most important is lifestyle. Mr. Shope gave me one of his strongest concepts when he said, don't just learn how to earn, learn how to live. And that's what lifestyle is all about, learning how to live. Here's one of the great challenges of life, being happy with what you have while in pursuit of what you want. Now consider this. Some people have plenty of beautiful things filling their days, but they get little happiness from them. Some people have money, but they have trouble finding joy in their lives. Imagine a father wads up a $5 bill and throws it at his son saying, here, if you need the darn stuff that bad, take it. Same money, poor style. And remember, it's not the amount that counts. It's the style that counts. Mr. Shove taught me lifestyle in those early days, starting with small amounts. He said, imagine that you're getting your shoes shined and the shoe shine boy has done a fabulous job. You have one of the world's all time great shines. So you pay him for the shine. Now you consider from the change in your hand, what kind of tip to give him. And the question pops into your mind, shall I give him one quarter or two quarters for my neat shine? Mr. Shove said, if two amounts for a tip ever come to your mind, always go for the higher amount. He said, become a two quarter person. I said, what difference would that make? One quarter or two quarters? He said, all the difference in the world. If you said, well, I'll just give him one quarter. That will affect you for the rest of the day. You will start feeling bad. Sure enough, in the middle of the day, you will look down at your great shoe shine and say, I've got to be cheap, one lousy quarter. That will affect you. However, if you go for two quarters, Shove said you can't believe the feeling you can buy for another quarter. That's lifestyle. Becoming a two quarter person and learning to get joy from the greater person you are becoming. A man came up and introduced himself to me after one of my seminars in Detroit, Michigan. And he said, Mr. Rohn, you got to me tonight. I've decided to change my whole life. I said, fantastic. He said, you will hear about it someday. I said, I don't doubt that. Sure enough, a few months later, I was back in Detroit for another lecture. And the same man walked up and said, Mr. Rohn, do you remember me? I said, I do. You are the man who said he was going to change his life. He said, that's me, and I've got to tell you a story. Here's the story he told me. After the last seminar, he said, I started thinking about ways to begin changing my life. And I decided to start with my family. I have two lovely teenage daughters, the best kids anyone could ask for. They never give me any trouble. However, I've always given them a hard time especially as teenagers. One of the things they dearly love to do is to go to rock and roll concerts, to see their favorite performers. Now I've always given them a hard time on this subject. They would ask to go and I would say, no, I don't want you to go. The music is too loud. You'll ruin your hearing. And besides, it's the wrong crowd. I would always give them a hard time. Then they would beg, please daddy, we want to go. We don't give you any trouble. We're good girls. Please let us go. Well, after they had begged long enough, I would reluctantly throw them the money and say, okay, if you have to go that bad. So that's where I decided to start to make some changes in my life. Then he said, here's what I did. Not long ago, I saw this advertisement that one of my daughter's favorite performers was coming to town. Guess what I did? I went down to the concert hall and bought the tickets myself. Later that day, when I saw my girls, I handed them this envelope and said, daughters of mine, you may not believe this, but inside this envelope are your tickets to the concert that's coming to town. I knew it was one of their favorites. They could not believe it. Then I told them one more thing. I said, begging days are over. Now my girls really couldn't believe it. Finally, I made them promise not to open the envelope till they got to the concert, and they agreed. Now comes concert time. When they arrive, they open the envelope and hand the tickets to the usher, 
He says, follow me. And he starts down front. They say, wait a minute, something must be wrong. The usher looks at the tickets and says, nothing is wrong, follow me. They walk down front, 10th row, center. Now the girls really cannot believe it. He said, I stayed up a little late that night, and sure enough, around midnight, my daughters came bursting through the front door. One of them lands in my lap, the other one has her arms around my neck, and they both say, you have got to be one of the world's all-time great fathers. What a neat story. What a great example of how it's possible with just a change in attitude and a little thought to live the good life. Same money, different style. Remember, the challenge is to get joy from your life and what you have to share. It's not the amount that counts. It's the uniqueness, the love, and the attitude that count. Even people of modest means can experience a sophisticated lifestyle. They simply learn to save up some of their Pepsi money for a bottle of fine wine. Don't spend all your money a quarter at a time. Save up and buy something of special value, something fine, or something that lasts, or something you are proud of, or a gift of value to give to someone special. Even with modest means, you can save your candy money for a concert. And for a sophisticated person, a few may be better than many. Better a few treasures than a house full of junk. Lifestyle is a matter of awareness, values, education, and disciplined taste. It is an art that brings joy as its practice, not just a subject to be studied. It is the deliberate decision to savor and enjoy all the experiences and possibilities of life. Remember, all good things are upstream. A conscious act from a unique thought. That's where the pleasure is. And the act serves as a bridge between dreams and reality. So develop your lifestyle a little more. Your style of seeing, giving, sharing, enjoying. It's not the amount that counts but the experience of choosing to live with style. I remember saying to Mr. Schoff one time, if I had more money, I would be happy. And he gave me some of the better words of wisdom when he said to me, Mr. Rohn, the key to happiness is not more. Happiness is an art to be studied and practiced. He said, more money will only make you more of what you already are. More will only more quickly send you on to your destination. He said, if you're inclined to be unhappy, if you get a lot of money, you will be miserable. More money will only make you more. More money will only amplify. If you're inclined to be mean and you get a lot of money, you will be a terror. If you're inclined to drink a little too much, when you get a lot of money, you can now become a drunk because you can drink everything. So style is not more. Style is an art, a genius, a design. Lifestyle is reserved for those who are willing to study and practice the higher arts of life. Lifestyle is culture, music, dance, art, sculpture, literature, plays, concerts. Lifestyle is a taste of the fine, the better, the best. Mortimer Adler, the philosopher says, if we don't go for the higher tastes, we will settle for the lower ones. So develop an appreciation for the fine. That is a worthy purpose. Developing an appetite for the unique things in life. Study the art and reach for the best. To have the best in the time we have available to us, that is the quest. Remember, it's not the amount, it's the imagination. My lady and I were on a trip to Carmel, California, one sunny summer day to do some shopping and exploring. I stopped to have the car service to the gas station. This young man, about 18 or 19, I would guess, came bouncing out to the car with a big smile and he said, can I help you? I said, yes, a full tank of gas, please. Well, not only did he fill the tank with gas, he checked every tire, washed every window, even the moon roof, checked everything, and all the time he was working, he was whistling, singing. 
My lady and I couldn't believe all the service and his obvious happiness. The young man brought me the bill, and as I was signing it, I said, "Hey, you really have taken good care of it. I appreciate it." And he said, "I really enjoy working. It's fun for me. I get to meet nice people like you." We couldn't believe it. this kid was something else. I said, "My lady and I are going to Carmel, and we want to drink one of those two-dollar milkshakes on the way up there." Where is the nearest Baskin Robbins? He said, "That's a great idea. Baskin Robbins is just a few blocks away." And he told us where to find it. And he said, "Don't park out front. Park around to the side so your car won't get hit." What a kid! So we drove to Baskin Robbins, walked in, and checked the flavor board, and ordered milkshakes. However, instead of ordering two milkshakes, we ordered three. Then we drove back to the station. The young kid dashes out to the car again and says, "Hey, I see you got your milkshakes." I said, "Yes, and this one is for you." When I offered it to him through the window, he couldn't believe it. He said, "For me?" I said, "Sure. With all the fantastic service you gave us, I couldn't leave you out of the milkshake deal." He said, "Wow. No one has ever bought me a milkshake." I said, That's probably true. Have a nice day. Then I buzzed up the window and we drove away. When I looked in the rearview mirror, there he was holding that milkshake, a big surprise smile on his face. Now, what did that cost me? Only two dollars. Hey, I've enjoyed and shared the memory of that experience a hundred times. For just two dollars. Remember, it's not the amount that counts; it's the style. That same day, I guess I was feeling extra creative. When my lady and I got to Carmel, I drove straight to the flower shop. We walked inside, and I said to the florist, "I need a long stem red rose for my lady to carry while we go shopping around Carmel." She was some impressed. The florist said, "Well, we sell them by the dozen." I said, "I don't need a dozen. I just need one." He said, "That'll cost you a couple of dollars for just one." I said, "Wonderful. There's nothing worse than a cheap rose." I selected the rose, handed it to my lady, and said, "Here, carry this while we stroll around town." She was impressed. And the cost? Two dollars. Just two dollars. A couple of hours later, we were having some refreshments, and my lady looked across the table and said, "Jim, I just thought of something." I said, "What's that?" She said, "I think I'm the only lady in Carmel today carrying a rose." I said, "That's probably true." For two dollars, can you imagine two dollars? Remember, it's not the amount. Hey, just two ideas and a total cost of four dollars for unique experiences and sweet memories. Just two modest examples of how easy it is to put style in your life. Make sure you don't miss out. Don't miss anything you can enjoy. Be sure you live your life in style. Here's something else to think about. Did you ever hear where the expression "tip" came from? As in tipping the waiter or waitress in a restaurant. Mr. Shelf taught me that it began as a symbol for the phrase to ensure promptness. Now Shelf said, if a tip is to ensure promptness, when should you give it? Answer: Up front. See, I didn't know that. I said, "No, you have lunch, and if you get good service, you leave a good tip. If you get lousy service, no tip." And he said to me, "No, no, Mr. Rome. Sophisticated people don't take a chance on good service. They ensure good service by giving the money up front." I said, "Wow, what a way to live! I had never thought of that." So the next time you have someone special to take to lunch, call the waitress over, arm around the shoulders, and say, "Here's five dollars. Would you take good care of me and my friend?" Shof said, "You won't believe what happens. They do what's known as hover. They hover around your table. Without the insurance, you are usually looking around, saying, 'Where is my waitress? Has she gone on a break?' Same money, different style." One last major point. 
Life in style is also life in balance. Make sure you pay attention to all the values and dimensions of your life. One is family. If you have someone you care about, there is no value to match that. One person caring for another is life in the best of style and value. Protect it with a vengeance. If a chair gets in the way, I suggest you destroy the chair. It was wisely said so long ago, but is still true for today. There are many treasures, but the greatest of these is love. Better to live in a tent on the beach and have a love affair than to live in a mansion by yourself. Ask me. I know. Family must be cultivated like an enterprise, like a garden. Time and effort and imagination, creativity and genius must be summoned constantly to keep it flourishing and growing. Next is friendship. A priceless value, friendship. Friends are those incredible people who know all about you and still like you. Friends are those people who are coming in when everyone else is leaving. And as someone once suggested, be sure to make the kind of friends on your way up who will take you in on your way down. Life is a bit of both up and down, but with true friends, friends who care regardless of your circumstances, the ups are more automatic and the downs less devastating. Traveling around the world, I have made some unique friends. I've also got some strange friends. One of them is a thief. He steals, but you'd love him. He's really a neat guy, but he really does steal. Now, he's not a big thief. He's just a little thief, but he is a thief. Once in a while, someone reminds me, your friends steal. I say, I know. What can I do? I talk to him about it. He's just my thieving friend. I do have one very special friend, though. If I was stuck in a Mexican jail and accused unduly, I would call this friend. Guess why I'd call this friend? He would come and get me. Now that is a friend. Someone who would come and get you. Guess how much you would spend to get me? Right, as much as it would take. Guess how long you would try to get me out? You're right, as long as it would take. That is a friend. Someone who would come and get me. Now, I also have some casual friends who would probably say, call me when you get back. I guess we all have some of those friends. But friendship is so vitally important for those in search of the good life. Make sure your friendships get the attention and the effort they deserve. Properly nourished, they will give back to you that priceless treasure of both pleasure and satisfaction called the good life. And remember, the good life is not an amount. The good life is an attitude, an act, an idea, a discovery, a search. The good life comes from lifestyle that is fully developed, regardless of your bank account, so that it provides you with a constant sense of joy in living and fuels the fires of commitment to all of the disciplines and fundamentals that make life worthwhile. What is wealth without character, industry without art, quantity without quality, Enterprise without satisfaction, possessions without joy. Become a person of culture to add to the whole culture, for we are most certainly a product of all the values of our community and country. Become that person of unusual substance that brings an added measure of genius to the whole so that our children and the children of many will be the beneficiaries of the treasure.